so I think one of the excite, uh, exciting things um, that there is in the future of the treatment of uh, Duchenne's is that we're going to have multiple choices and maybe and this was not an option that we previously had. Um, so the there may be a medicine that is going to target the the specific genetics that that boy has, and then another one that's going to target decreasing the fibrosis or scarring in a muscle, and another one um, that maybe just decreases any kind of inflammation that could then uh, induce scarring, and that there's going to be some sort of cocktail that exists for the ultimate treatment of, of each child um, to make it a milder disease. I think the first step is, is early identification, um, just being, you know, for any uh, child neurologist or adult neurologist who is seeing a, a boy uh, who has had motor delay or speech delay, being aware that uh, checking uh, the CPK and getting that early diagnosis or the early treatments can be uh, put in place is, is very important. Um, if you know there's a family history and there's a new child being born into that family, uh, that's a boy, go ahead and check the CPK, CPK right away um, so that we can have that early diagnosis um, in place to start therapies as soon as possible. The, um, the other piece I would say is know your local clinic. So um, if you are a community neurologist and um, just make sure that you're familiar with your local um, pediatric neuromuscular clinic that has a more of a multi um, disciplinary approach and, and what components um, it, of that multidisciplinary clinic does you know your local clinic offer? Um, does it have all the medical specialists and supports that um, each child is going to need? Uh, the last part is to be familiar with um, parent organizations um, because they provide a lot of information from day to day of, of how to approach a school or how to approach um, um, you know, just um, a, a new diagnosis and, and finding other parents who have been um, been through that path with a, 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 new, a new diagnosis of Duchenne's and, and kind of how do, you know, how do they get to the point that they're ready to come to clinic and uh, to hear about therapies. Um, I think that there's a lot to be said in how one parent can guide another. It's absolutely critical to identify patients that may have a diagnosis of Duchenne muscular dystrophy. We know that with early institution of supportive care and, uh, and medication management, that our patients have an improved prognosis. So it's absolutely critical to be aware of some of the signs and symptoms of Duchenne muscular dystrophy that would prompt a referral to a neuromuscular specialist or to a general neurologist who would know how to evaluate that patient accordingly. Some of those signs would include a motor delay. Uh, it would include enlargement of the calf muscles in a young boy associated also with difficulties rising from a seated position on the floor, inability to keep up with their peers from a motor perspective, and challenges with things that involve head flexion, like going upstairs or jumping. That should prompt either a direct referral to a neurologist or a neuromuscular specialist, Although in addition, the primary care person could also pursue an evaluation of CK. This is a simple blood test that should be able to be performed by all laboratories and would traditionally be elevated into the multiple thousands. And that would indicate that that boy is at risk for Duchenne muscular dystrophy and would ultimately prompt molecular confirmation with DNA testing. Now is an incredibly exciting time for our patients impacted by dystrophinopathies and Duchenne muscular dystrophy in particular. There are revolutionary new medications that um, have been FDA approved and are also in clinical trial currently. Um, there are uh, several more medications that are currently in the developmental pipeline that are providing incredible hope to our patients impacted by muscular dystrophy. 
And this is the rationale for why it is incredibly important to identify these patients early so that they can pursue treatment in a multidisciplinary clinical setting, but also to permit them the opportunity to participate in either clinical trials or in the potential to receive medications that they might be uh, able to uh, receive based on their DNA testing results. So many of these treatments are DNA specific and mutation specific. And so it's critical to have care at an institution that is able to navigate some of those complexities to make sure that the child is receiving uh, every opportunity that they can to improve their prognosis long term. I think that the way that um, Duchenne muscular dystrophy, I think there are um, some important points. I think it's a disease in which there is still very significant delay in the diagnosis. So many families, they still go for two or three years not knowing what's wrong with their child. So we also frequently now in the community, we refer to a diagnostic odyssey where patients, you know, the parents know that there's something is wrong, but the diagnosis is not confirmed quickly. So I think that is a, a fastest, uh, diagnosis is very, very important. I think that a genetically confirmation is very, very important. And then really establishing best standard of care. I don't think we really have talked. We have talked about a, a lot of the new drugs and the new drugs coming down the pipes. But what we have not touched on is really there is established, well-published standard of care guidelines that have prolonged the survival and the quality of life of Duchenne patient, even before all this gene modifying treatment. So we know that, for example, you know, the multidisciplinary approach with the pulmonologist, physical therapist, social worker, cardiologist is extremely important and can make a huge difference. So my recommendation will be to really have uh, patients who are identified or suspected to have Duchenne muscular dystrophy to be referred very promptly to a center with uh, specialized expertise um, able to provide the multidisciplinary approach with all the subspecialty and to really impl implement the standard of care that we know work very well, and especially initiating corticosteroids early um, which is really considered standard of care, and it is given to all children. So corticosteroids are really standard of care for all Duchenne, regardless of their um, type of genetic mutation. And then on top of that, um, it will be very important also to provide patients with the opportunity to participate in clinical trials for this novel drugs that we have discussed and there are many many trials right now that really need patient participation so a prompt diagnosis implementing best standard of care participation in novel clinical trials that's in an ideal world that's what needs to be done for duchenne dystrophy patients i will say that nowadays there is um, a phenomenal momentum between pharmaceutical company, um, academia, and uh, patients' organization. And there are really very new, exciting opportunity for this disease to really make a dramatic change in the natural history and in the outcome. We did not touch on gene transfer through gene therapy. There are at least three programs right now that are advancing in a very promising way um, with gene therapy. And I think that the future for Duchenne dystrophy is really looking much, much better and uh, much more promising than uh, even just uh, five years ago. So it's a very, um, uh, it's a time of many opportunities for this disease.